Welcome to a training session on how to serve passengers with hearing loss at an airport. As staff members who work with different members of Joe Public, it is important that you understand the needs of the individual with hearing loss. Information in this session, as provided by the National Council for Persons with Physical Disabilities in South Africa, aims to change attitudes and to create a sensitivity towards passengers with hearing loss. The two main challenges staff at airports will face when assisting the traveller with hearing loss is communication and ensuring that the passenger is aware of evacuation procedures and brought to safety in case of an emergency. This will ensure an improved experience for both service providers and persons who experience hearing loss. The National Council for Persons with Physical Disabilities in South Africa gets its mandate to bring you this information from the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. It recognizes persons with disabilities as those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual or sensory impairments. During interaction with people, these barriers may hinder people with disabilities from fully and effectively participating in society on an equal basis with others. This convention is an international human rights instrument intended to protect the rights and dignity of persons with disabilities. Sensitization Passengers with hearing loss often experience misunderstandings and unnecessary hardship as a result of an inability to communicate. It is therefore important that especially frontline staff be sensitive towards the specific communication needs to accommodate hearing impaired travelers. Staff should be aware of the ways to integrate and accommodate passengers with hearing loss according to the principle of universal design, also keeping in mind their workplace policies and procedures. Universal design takes into account the needs of all users, adds flexibility to designs or information. This way of design allows a greater variety of people to have access to a product or to use it. Communication methods. A person who is born deaf or became deaf before the acquisition of a spoken language generally uses a sign language as a medium of communication and a sign language interpreter as communication facilitator. This category of people with hearing loss can also make use of other means of communication, for instance a pen and notepad. Assistive living devices like visual lights, vibrating equipment, a variety of paired vibrating equipment and transmitter and receiver devices also allow the integration of the person with pre-lingual hearing loss into society. Postlingual hearing loss occurs when someone became deaf after the acquisition of a spoken language. People with postlingual hearing loss can use transcribing, speech reading and a lip speaker practitioner to support them when communicating. A lip speaker practitioner is a communication facilitator who transfers the spoken message word by word by using clear articulation of the mouth, gestures, body language and facial expression. Assistive devices also enable the passenger with hearing loss to act or communicate independently in different situations. Although nowadays assistive devices that support communication are more readily available, it is best to get guidance from experts as to which is the correct device to use in an airport environment and to have it properly installed. Typically, postlingual hearing loss is a result of trauma or sickness, old age or noise pollution. Considering these factors should be suggestive of the most effective way of integration and communication with a passenger with hearing loss. The golden rule of communicating with a person with hearing loss is to ask the individual about the communication method they prefer. This could include writing, the use of sign language, total communication with body language or facial expressions, and gestures with clear articulation of words. Staff members should always have a pen and paper handy to assist with communication. Total communication is only effective when the following is taken into account. Be prepared to accommodate a hearing impaired person at any time. Do not act shocked or frightened by the thought of communicating with passengers with hearing loss. Show a supportive attitude towards the passenger with hearing loss. A positive attitude helps make the communication process accessible even if there is difficulty in the communication process. Proper illumination will ensure that the person with hearing loss can speech read more successfully. 
When speaking to someone with hearing loss, look at the person rather than at the communication facilitator and addressing the communication facilitator rather than your client. Keep a list of South African sign language interpreters and lip speaker practitioners handy at each counter to be able to contact them for support on short notice. In order to keep the hearing impaired person informed of what is happening in his physical surroundings, information and wayfinding indicators should be clear with large font wording carefully placed and lit properly. Using pictograms will also be beneficial for all travelers. This will ensure access to information, including security information. Ensure that the electronic information boards are updated continuously and that changes are made on the boards before the announcements are made through the intercom system, as noisy environments make announcements inaudible to a person experiencing hearing loss. Booking Generally speaking, the journey most often starts off by making a reservation. People with hearing loss often prefer to do this via a travel agent or internet booking facility. Referring to the client's FreeMEC number when completing the reservation application will inform all relevant staff about the passenger's specific requirements even before arrival and the crew will be prepared to assist the person with a disability in the best possible way. For travelers with hearing loss, the ideal is to get through the system of checking in, security clearance at security gates, boarding, arrival and collecting luggage with as little direct communication situations as possible. Therefore, relevant information should be clear and visible for everybody to understand and follow. Many security measures are verbal or auditory and the person with hearing loss's inability to communicate with security officers could cause them to become suspicious of the traveler. The assistive listening and living devices used by persons with hearing loss could also be confiscated by uninformed security staff members. Remember, it is not necessary that someone with hearing loss remove their hearing aids or the exterior component of a cochlear implant at security checkpoints. If a hearing dog is used by the traveler, the dog and the person with hearing loss should remain together while going through the security checkpoint. On board. The crew should explain onboard procedures very clearly by using the onboard safety card hand signals and clear articulation of words. They should individually explain emergency procedures as well as the rules regarding the use of technology, call buttons, seats, trays, etc. All general announcements by crew or captain should also be communicated to the person experiencing hearing loss in a method of his or her choice. Emergency Situations Emergency warning signals and activation plans must be clear and both audible and visual. Emergency signs and assembly points should also be indicated on the airport's webpage and pamphlets. Visible emergency and fire alarms and directions should be indicated with red flashing lights and wayfinding signs as required by the Health and Safety Act. Safety videos should be displayed in the airport building as well as on flights in a style that require no languages at all to inform passengers, crew and staff members of procedures. Remember, your attitude, compassion and sensitivity will determine the quality and success of the traveler with hearing losses flight experience. Thank you for watching this training DVD. For more information, contact the NCPP DSA at www dot ncppdsa dot org dot za